Hey everyone and welcome to this video. I want to thank everybody who joined my painting competition and a big shout out to the winner, Stark Painting Minis. Go check out his Instagram. And he asked me to paint dinosaur skin. So let me show you how I do this. As you can see on the screen, I've included a picture with all the paints I'm using for this model. You can pause it, copy them. I've written them down beneath uh, in the description as well, beneath the video. And um, I'm starting off with three colors for the base coat. Well, four if you count the spikes. That is military green, golden olive, desert yellow, and Mephiston red. So I'm starting with the golden olive. This is going to be um, the mid-tone between the military green and the joints, which are going to be desert yellow. A bit of the transition color. And what I'm basically doing is I'm blocking in the colors really fast and not that neat. It's a bit messy. Um, the paint is still wet when I'm already picking another color, for example. So I'm already sort of wet blending them together and just trying to create a bit of an opaque layer with those colors. I've started with a black base coat, but um, since the military green is a very is a more opaque color, so that actually covers the model a lot faster. I recommend using um, a lighter primer to start with. I think if you start with gray, for example, it's a lot easier to get the opaque colors with or opaque layers with the desert yellow and the golden olive, because it took me quite a while to get. Um, well, the non, non patchy look. So, yeah, it might help a lot to use um, a lighter primer. And you're gonna see that as well, because as you see, when I'm painting this, it's really patchy. It has no coverage at all. I have to go over the same spot multiple times to create an opaque layer. And, well, that's actually most of the work um, in creating this, this skin. So I'm creating um, the bit, a bit of the pattern. Um, he's going to be darker on his back. Then have red spikes. And then his joints. The knees, the yeah, um, lower part of his leg are going to be light. And then in between, it's going to be a little bit of... a uh, greenish yellow transition color between the darker green and the yellow. And like I said before, you really it helps to paint this faster. Just block in the colors really fast. Don't worry about being perfectly neat. Things like that. Um, if you do that, you already... Because the paint is still wet, it, it is wet blending. Because the paint is still wet when you're picking the second paint, you, um, you then create a, a transition between the two because you're mixing them on the model. And that helps. And you basically just keep doing that till you're happy. I'm using a bit of an older brush. 
it's um, a Raphael 2.0 and it's older um, it um, it's lost its nice and sharp tip so it's a it's an older a bit frayed rounded tip and this makes it easier to blend as well also you do ruin the tip of your brush really fast if you do this kind of paint work with a really new brush and well some some um, brushes can be really expensive so it would be kind of a waste if you paint like this with your new brush and then you can paint like one model before it's lost its nice sharp tip As you can see, it's slowly getting better. And the layers are starting to come together. And you can see less of the black primer still showing through. I'm also painting the inside of his leg with the desert yellow right now. Um, the goal is to give him a, um, the yellow, the lighter belly as well. So that means the inside of his leg is also the yellow creating that transition from the joint towards his belly in the light color as well. Same as the underside of his tail, for example. Now the spikes on his back are going to be red. I'm starting off with Mephiston Red. Now that Mephiston Red does not have the best coverage. So you have to go over the spikes multiple times to create an opaque layer. I do really want an opaque layer. Because I'm going to be painting them with Wild Rider Red. And then, no, Evil Sun Scarlet. And then ending with the Wild Rider Red over that. So um, it's important that the Mephiston Red has a nice coverage. It's really, it has to be an opaque layer. Because I have to go over the spikes multiple times, I'm not being too careful. I'm just painting them fast. And uh, I will work back uh, a little bit uh, of the green on the underside of the spikes. Just because, well, I, I hit a little bit some spots here and there. Now I'm still using the same um, three paints for the skin as in the beginning. Still the desert yellow, the golden olive and the military green. But I'm starting to be a bit more precise with the painting. Uh, most of the layers are almost opaque. There's a little bit of the black primer still showing through here and there. So this is just a matter of um, continuing to go over those spots and then, then filling in the color. But now I'm just I'm more being more precise. I'm uh, using smaller smaller brush strokes. I'm um, less wet blending and more just picking one paint and while there's still paint of that color, for example golden olive on the brush, I dip my paint into the military green and then um, you mix it on the brush a little bit already and that creates a bit of a transition color as well. And in this way I'm just filling in the spots with the right color. and creating the nice opacity. And you really want to take your time for this step. 
because it's really important that the colors are nicely opaque, that you have um, the setup of those tr transitions already in there, um, no hard lines forming between the colors, stuff like that. So just take your time to blend, wet blend, any way you want, and create those steps. Now, unfortunately, in the next step, uh, my second camera stopped and I did not realize. So I don't have a wet palette showing in the corner. But I have added, um, let's see, the colors Lorne Forest, Ogryn Camo, Iraqi Sand and Wild Rider Red. No, Evil Sun Scarlet. But don't worry about the, the reds yet. That's... The last step. And because my layers are now nicely opaque, I've got the, 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 the transitions nicely worked in already. Now it's just a matter of making them, yeah, um, actually a little bit more rough again with some stippling. I like the, the, it's, it's a raptor skin. It's not perfectly neat. They're not perfectly neat transitions. So I wanted to create some roughness in that. And that's what I'm doing with uh, stippling. So I'm using a really old brush for this. Because I don't want nice perfect round dots. There can be some lines in there. It, it has to be, yeah, I don't know, a bit rough textured look. And I'm using the Lauren Forest between the military green and the golden olive. Um, I'm using the Ogren Camo over the golden, golden olive near to the desert yellow. You want to use the Iraqi sand to really paint over the desert yellow to brighten those joints. And I have so oh I forgot the black, but I have some black which I use um, on the tops of the military green between the military green, which you see me do now, and the red with some well, stippling dots of black over the military green. And if you think the black is too strong, just um, do what I said before. Just pick up some black and then pick up some military green with the same brush. Mix them together in the brush. Well, I rub my finger, my thumb, and then they're mixed. And then you can stipple and you have a bit of a less harsh black. And you will see the colors on uh, in a bit because uh, I moved on to the lower part of his leg and I did have a wet palette for that part. So there you go, you can see which color I pick now. And it's basically the same for the lower leg as well. And um, the beauty of this stippling technique is that if you think, well, this color, these, these dots are too dark or too light, just pick the lower color. So basically, if you go with the military green over the golden olive and you think these spots are too dark, you pick up some golden olive and you work them back. Or even some Lauren Forest to create that transition step. You can just uh, play around a bit and create a pattern you like. I was originally planning to use a lot more of the Ogryn Camo over the Golden Olive, 
but as I was working in the dots, I um, I really liked the green color of the golden olive, so I left more of that showing through than I actually planned in the beginning. But obviously these techniques, you can do the same with any color. Just pick what you like, look at a color wheel, and well, the technique stays the same, doesn't matter what color you use. And there you go, that's just it. You just have to con continue the same steps um, over the whole model. And I am now moving on to the spikes. Um, I started with the Evil Sun Scarlet already, but I'm working back some of it on red, because some of the base, uh, the lower points, were not that nicely covered yet. But now I'm moving on to the Evil Sun Scarlet. And what I'm doing is I'm picking out the yeah frontal half top of the spike. You'll see when I turn my model around, you can see exactly the point which um, I'm using the Evolston Scarlet on. And um, leave some of the Mephiston Red showing through at the bottom of the spike. Doesn't have to be that much, but a little bit can always be nice. It is a beautiful color of red, the Mephiston Red, so it's a really good color to keep showing through. And I don't want the spikes to be too orange, so that helps as well. They have to be mostly red. And then with the Wild Rider Red, you go over the part you just painted with uh, Evil Sun Scarlet. Just make it a little bit smaller. So some of the Evil Sun Scarlet is also showing through. But as you can see, I'm not painting too neat. I'm painting it pretty fast. Because, well, you can work uh, the Evil Sun Scarlet and even the Mephiston Red back in if you made too big a mark with the Wild Rider Red, for example. And because I'm painting them really fast, those spikes, I'm also semi-wet blending. Because the paint is still wet in some places when I'm um, going over with another color again. And that helps with a smooth transition as well. And that's it. There you go. That brings us to the end of my video. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed.